In this video, traders, we're going to look at what is an asymmetrical trade. Stay tuned. Hey guys, one welcome to you. All right, so I'm listening again to the Market Wizards, uh, the recent Market Wizards book by Jack Schwager, which is Unknown Market Wizards. And in there, he's talking to a trader. Uh, I mean, he's talking about an asymmetrical trade. And this effectively is just a different way of saying risk reward ratio trade. And I know sometimes it'd be confusing because we say risk reward ratio, and we say three to one, and we say this, and you think, well, are you risking this to make that, that to make the other? So a lot of clarifying this quick video for those of you who are kind of thinking, what does it all mean? So asymmetrical trade, an asymmetrical risk trade, basically means this. It means you are risking, let's say if you're risking a hundred dollars to make $300, you would have a three to one risk to reward ratio or reward to risk actually technically because you're risking $100 to make 300. And an asymmetrical trade is essentially any trade where you're making more, many times multiples more of the risk that you're taking. So why do traders want to do this? So traders want to do this because we don't have to be right very often. You know, one of the guys in the book was talking about He's often right, you know, maybe less than 50%, but when he is right, he's making, you know, 10 times his risk, 20 times his risk, and that's an extreme version. If you were day trading, it's still the same type of thing. You basically want to be saying, okay, this is why we talk about running our winners so much, because we want this to come to fruition. We want to structure the trade that we're risking X when we're making 2X, 3X, 5X. And an asymmetrical trade is, you know, even when we see people like Paul Tudor Jones, Ages, you know, I know he's not a um, he's not he's not a very active trader anymore. Um, but when he was, one thing he said was, you know, I just always look for these asymmetrical trades, asymmetrical risk trades, where I can risk X to make many multiples because they are out there, and the nemesis. And the enemy of those is over trading. We always look for these little trades, these little scalps and stuff. And sometimes we can fall into the trap where we go, oh, you know, well, if I get one to one, I just need to be right more frequently. And yes, you know, there are scalpers out there who are very, very precise and are getting 80% plus, and they can get away with one to one because that's their model. The model is quick, it's fast, it's probably making a bit of a spread in between. Um, one to one is fine for them and they cut losses quickly. You know, but for most traders, it's so key to look for these type of trades that have this asymmetrical risk. And you also don't want to go down the probability scale either. And what I mean by this is you don't want to go down to a low probability. So buying very far out of the money call options have a very low probability of working. Yes, they have an asymmetrical risk. You can say, why don't I just buy, buy out the money call options or other money put options? Well, yes, but you're also factoring the fact that you know they're not gonna come good. They might come in good one in 100, and so it, it, it kind of works out. You need to manufacture the asymmetrical risk by aligning with conditions that are, are really perfect for your edge, for want of a better word. You know, so let's look at an example. You might have a scenario where, hey, you know what? Um, I like buying stuff at the bottom of a kind of aggressive move into some exhaustion. So let's use that for argument's sake and actually reasonably good strategy if you're day trading, that type of thing. You know your ranges, you know your levels, and you go, fine, okay, I've got a key level here from yesterday's low, uh, and I'll see the market coming lower, 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 and it just flushes right through and then closes back above it. And you've got big volume, you've got a tick index expansion, whatever it may be. And you say to yourself, hey, that's a flush, that feels like a bit of liquidity vacuum, that feels like the last of the move, we're extended as well, et cetera, et cetera, all those things that you might add up to to quantify the reason to go long here, you're in a longer term uh, bull market, you're in an uptrend, et cetera, not a bad place to buy. Now you say, okay, where could we go with this? Perhaps you start drawing your VWAP here. I hope you can see the green on there, guys. Sometimes it doesn't come out very well. Uh, that's your VWAP there, let's put, make it black. There's your VWAP there. You might say, okay, well, the distance between the VWAP, volume weight average price, and the entry if I go along here, and where would I put my stop? Here, okay, well that stops, you know, let's say it's a one, a distance of, well, it would be something like, let's say it's gonna be 20 ticks, for example, and you can say, right, that's my one, so if I 
risk in 20 ticks, and that's equal to one unit of risk. For example, and you're going to be adjusting your position size to suit. That's a separate topic. And you might say, okay, well, my target for the VWAP here is 60 ticks, which is equal to three units of risk. Okay, so now you've structured a three to one risk reward ratio trade. So what it means is if you're wrong, you're losing 20 ticks multiplied by your position size. If you're right, you're going to be making 60 ticks times your position size. So you, you risk one to make three. And the assumption is that at this level, and this is where kind of the skill of trading comes into play, when it's at this level, an exhaustion in this example, an exhaustion level, you've got all these things that are lining up, the probability of it popping off that low is, what is it, 50-50? Maybe it's 50-50. But if it is, and you take those structurally all, all the time, and you hold them to the target, then you're gonna make money. Now, of course, that's oversimplifying things. We can't really just put a value on whether we see that popping off, but that's when experience comes in, and that's when knowing what your edges comes in. That's when knowing where you're going to strike. And it doesn't matter what you're trading, no matter what time frame you're trading, you have to know where you're gonna strike, where the probability of success is, and then, and then, and then, you still need to have the asymmetrical risk trade. You still need to be in a spot where you go, right, it's 50-50, let's say, but I still must make sure I'm making many multiples of my risk to make this work. What you can't do is say, oh, I think it's gonna to come to here. And again, this is, an, uh, this is an art form, guys, it's not science. We don't know how far it's gonna go. I'm just an example there is the VWAP as a, a likely mean reversion position. You can't use 20 ticks and say, I think it's gonna pop 20 ticks and risk 20 because you're just playing a, a, you know, a, a kind of heads and tails game where you're risking 100 to make 100. 50-50 shot and you wanna make 20 or, or lose 20, it doesn't make any sense. You know, there's no point in playing that game. You have to have the asymmetrical risk uh, on the trades. So you're risking 100 bucks to make 300, you're risking 1,000 to make 3,000, uh, 3, whatever it may be. Now, the challenge comes is very finally, I just wanna finish with this point, and why it's so important, we talk about running our winners. Because if you structure a trade and you wait for it, you're patient, you pull the trigger, you wait for your exact level, it flushes through, lots of volume pops back up, you can quantify the risk, you put the stop in, there's your one unit of risk, you go, right, there's my target. If you start meddling with the trade and you start closing it before it hits the target, you ruin the whole thing. You think, oh, I'm gonna close it, I'm gonna cover it, I'm gonna do this. You just ruin the whole thing. So it pays to, you know, be be good and mindful of holding it to that final target. Now, of course, conditions may change, situations may change, you might adjust that. That's okay to a certain extent, but as long as you structure the trend, as long as you're taking these trades with that asymmetrical risk reward ratio that have got a reasonable chance of success, even 50-50, you'll come out on top over time. All right, guys, take care. See you next one. Bye-bye.